So I'm here with Scott Alden, Aldi, board game geek extraordinaire. We're going to look at a different side. We're, we, I know that a lot of you have seen the coverage that they provide from the output, we the broadcast that. that you're seeing, but we're going to actually look at the behind the scenes and see all the technology and all the ins and outs that they have to go to to provide you with that coverage because it's not insignificant. We can see behind us here some of the equipment and some of the people involved. So without further ado, Scott, take it over here. Thanks, and, and Thanks for us. coming over. Hey, um, no yeah, well, we started this four years ago. We started doing video at Spiel and um, we weren't initially going to do video. We showed up, no plans for video, no plans to record a thing, just geek buzz which is, I'll show you that after if you want okay. to see it, sure. uh, and um, get games for, for our con, BGG con. One, one of the guys, uh, Lincoln actually, walking around, he actually see him in the background over there, a long haired guy, uh, he said, uh, cut, <laughs> um, he uh, suggested, hey, we should hook up a webcam, because they're playing this game with Freedom and Frieza at our booth. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's not a bad idea. Okay, let's hook up a webcam. Hook the webcam, of course the audio is just terrible, the mic is blown, because this this whole hall is just, not, it's probably 90 dB, yeah, at yeah. least, maybe 100, and uh, just blew out the mic. But we got the game on camera, but no audio. We went out and bought a Logitech mic, and you know how to buy electronics in Germany, it's just like, good luck. Yeah. We found a place, got it, brought it back, and it was a nice mic, and we, we used that mic uh, in the next year, too. We did webcam two years in a row, and... Um, you know, the little low-res stuff, but live-streamed it, too, because we had internet connection because we needed it for GeekBuzz. Anyway, long story short, we bought a TriCaster two years ago, down there in the corner, I don't know if it's in the shop. And what that does is allows us to hook up three cameras to the to the TriCaster, I don't know if you can see the screen. Uh, and what we can do is live-switch those cameras uh, between a straight-on camera, a side camera, and an overhead camera. So very much like a traditional like news broadcast almost. In fact, that's what the TriCaster, the TriCaster commercial for you. It's a, uh, a broadcast studio in a 20-pound box. It's amazing. They have lowered the price now to $4,000. It is un... I did not pay $4,000. I wish I waited one more year <laughs> because their new one that just came out like last month, like if I waited one more year, $4,000. I paid a little more than that, uh, but it's been really cool and it's like... It's got like wipes and fades and overlays, and you can do the titles, and it's got anima you know you can do animations and all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, that, that adds in a, you have the technology, but you also have to have a person there, yeah, like a switcher. A yeah, you definitely need a producer to uh, switch the video and like kind of listen. You know, we have uh, wireless mics that we use instead of wire. It makes it a little easier on walking around and whatnot. Um, but you have to kind of change camera when you need to, like overhead shot, and uh, we we like to zoom in on the stuff. You know, the top down view. Um, get some nice close-ups of all the stuff. Um, There's really an art, an art to that. You yeah, really and have to get the, the cool flow. thing about the TriCaster, it also has built-in streaming. So you just punch oh, nice. in your your Ustream media server address, and you hit the stream button, and it it's like magic. I mean, it's, it's, you're online. Wow. One button after you configure. So we we stream everything. It's like 10-hour streaming, and then we record everything in high def, and then we edit that later and upload to YouTube for Board Game Geek. You know, proper. Every demo is like 15, 10 to 15 minutes, and we started doing that. Um, started the schedule like a couple months ago, and it filled up really fast. And, and this year we're like overbooked. You we're overbooked by like 20. You started on Tuesday or Wednesday? When did you actually we, start uh, doing interviews? We start with interviews on Wednesday, but we set up on Tuesday. It takes okay. all day to set this booth up, right? Because uh, we got so much going on this year, it's crazy. Um, and then we uh, started on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Went to seven, uh, so nine hours of of streaming, uh, nine, and it's gonna be nine hours a day up till Sunday, which is close early, so we get one less hour. But it's some work. A cool it's schedule. a little bit. Of, I'm. I start feeling it. I'm already feeling yeah. a little. <laughs> but we are too. Loopy, especially with I didn't. I didn't have uh, jet lag or anything because I've been here for a week on vacation. Before. Right. Right. So um, I've gotten used to the time, <laughs> but I'm still kind of waking up. I'm nervous. Like, I woke up at five o'clock this morning. I'm like. Gotta, we got to back up the hard drive because we didn't back it up last night, and you have to get a little, go, you know, typical stuff you got to deal with. But uh, now, is that how you're storing the? the yeah, all the videos are stored on the hard drive on the TriCaster. It has like uh, enough for like uh, 20 hours. Oh, nice. Okay. Up. And then we offload that to another. You see a little three terabyte drive sitting up there. Oh yeah, yeah. On top with a burner, and um, that's the fastest way to back it up. So you got the backup. And then I take that home, 
and edit that those originals down to I cut them, put our titles and stuff on there. Right. And that's the product. I know that. I know that drill. All yeah, too I think well. you know that. Uh, but that I think my guys be in the yes. same boat. <laughs> for sure. For yeah. sure. So, um, well, now in terms of, do you see down the road? Are there any bells and whistles or that sort of refinement? You have a system in place that obviously works yeah. pretty well now, but in terms of looking, you know, next year, year after, well, this in year, terms of yeah, this year we actually have a roving reporter, uh, Eric Martin from nice. Board Game News on Board Game Geek. Um, he's out with, an, with a cameraman and uh, kind of what you guys have, a little mic, and they're just doing some stuff that we couldn't fit in here okay. to fill in the gaps. There's lots of interesting stuff that just came out of nowhere, and you got we're just like curious to see how it is. So. Sure, sure. Uh, in the future, I don't know. It's a lot of work already. <laughs> I don't know how you can improve on this. I don't know. You probably can. It's got, you know, it's, it's the best we can do with what we have. Uh, a lot, everybody here is a volunteer. I have a couple employees, but not very many. And um, yeah, so it's you're been doing growing each the... year. Like we, but we book quick. You know, what's that? What's that message went out to the publishers? It's like yeah. I want to get in. Do you have an idea, like approximate number on from you know if you look from uh, Wednesday? It's two hundred games. Wow. I don't know how many publishers that is. I think it's like it's a it's a publisher every half hour for for nine hours a day. Yeah. So eighteen times five. So almost a hundred. Ridiculous. It's we feel in probably almost 100 publishers, 200 games. Yeah. Plus, we're going to rove. That's probably another 50. <laughs> Some work. But it pays dividends. Uh, I think, yeah, in you, terms know, of that, you we, know that people. We're really to here it. for BGG Con. And that's kind of what, you know, the business side is basically get the games, we take them home. BGG Con is the premier post spiel convention, I think. And right. um, everybody gets to play these great games. I mean, right off, I mean, you can't get any quicker than that unless you're. Unless you're coming here and bringing them home, right. you're not going to get them any faster. Yeah, there's no organized play system uh, for, yeah, exactly. for seeing there's, these games at, at this scale. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So, do you want to look at anything else? Yeah, I, I think it'd be fun if we went and okay. maybe yeah, looked sure. at Geek Buzz. So we'll, we'll yeah, let's go travel across, across and the, I'll show you, uh, the show you a little bit about that. Excellent. So we've looked at the TriCaster and the setup for the live streaming of all the, the demonstrations going on here at Essen, but really the kind of inspiration for you coming to here was what's behind us here, which is Geek Buzz. So maybe explain a little bit. I think that this is sort of obvious and self-evident what's going on, but people standing at laptops, it might not be clear what Geek Buzz is all about. So, um, so back when we started going to Spiel, um, Fair Play, does a leaderboard from ratings of their subscribers. I'm like, I don't know exactly how it works. I've never really explored the intricacies of it. But it's you walk by their booth and they have a, a board about that big of their names of the games that are interesting. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's kind of weak. You can do better. Yeah. And so Dirk and I had an idea, like, let's put up laptops and let, let people come and rate the games and see what's what bubbles to the top. And so that's what Geek Buzz is. It's a custom system software, uh, runs on a laptop. I have a server behind us, uh, or in front of us, I should say. And then um, it collates the ratings. This year we're doing something different though. We're just doing thumbs ups. We found that people take it pretty seriously and they like to come and put ones or fives into the system. It was a one to five system okay. last year. And that's kind of not, it didn't work out so great. So people were gaming, trying to game. Yeah, there's the some system there's some bit. negativity to knock other games down, and you know, with not we don't have like a hundred thousand people coming rating games. It's you know maybe fifty people, hundred people, okay, uh, per game. I should say we have more than that coming. Sure, sure. Uh, but one one or one two ones would knock a game down from like first place to like twentieth place on a refresh of the screen. You're like, that was number one like five seconds ago. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> so I've been thinking about the problem and. It's kind of like Pinterest, where you just like stuff. But I like that. Mm -hmm. And then so you get a card. Thank you. Trust the assistants. <laughs> so I have, you get a card, it's got a code, and you use this card all week. And you can come back and rate, well, thumbs up more games than when you, when you come back and do... Uh, when you get more games in. So when you start playing some more stuff, you can go back and say, oh, I like this, I like this. We do not have thumbs down. Okay. that would be the whole that. negative thing again. <laughs> so it's purely positive. 
I've learned my lesson about thumbs down <laughs> on the site. That did not work. Like, I'm not doing thumbs down. I learned my lesson. So, so I think it, we're going to see how it turns out. Okay. And I'm pretty happy with what we've got so far. And we're just, we're only about five hours. What time is it? Six o'clock? So, like so we're about six hours in. Um, first day. Started a little bit late. But um, I'm really excited to see what it's going to be. And it, it'll, it'll give a good amount of games like that are kind of like... Those are the popular games. Not may not be the best games, just the stuff that people liked and checked. And I think that's going to be a cool way to just get a feel for like what's going on here. There's a ton of games. 500 games, something coming out. I think it's like so, uh, how do you how do you go through 800 games? You cannot. So we come here. We have a pretty good list, and you can go check those out more closely. So it gives so you kind of the pulse of at least what has a wider appeal because the wider appeal, yeah, the more it's, likely it's going to be. This is popular. Right? It's going to miss a little, some of the little guys, unfortunately. And I don't know how to solve that problem. Hopefully the stream and some of their stuff we do will uh, expose their game to more people to check it out. And it'd be pretty fun in the stream. But, you know, for the we think it's going to be a good solution for what the problems were last year. And that's good for us. Anything else? Any questions about it? Um, I know this was developed in house by yeah, you. Did you yep, do all the yep, coding, or was, and I rewrote it from scratch this year? Wow! <laughs> because you know we turned off the numbers and I put thumbs and we spiced up the interface a little bit. <laughs> Have you thought so, about instead of a, a thumbs down having a meh? Meh? That could be the same as thumbs down. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I guess it could be. Yeah, it would be similar in nature, but I don't know. Maybe. I might stir up a hornet's nest. Yeah. yeah already kind something of gets fifty mehs and one like. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk Yeah, well, thanks for coming by this, this year, guys. I know you guys want to, you know, you're doing a whole lot yourself, and yep. <laughs> it's a lot of work for not much reward. Some reward. The reward of giving to the board game. Yes, yes. That's its own reward. Yes. We'll, we'll keep telling ourselves that. Right? Yes. <laughs> well, thanks, Well, Ollie. I know you kickstarted this. This is a Kickstarter. Yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah, well, I appreciate you guys coming by. Thanks. Thank you.